Thank you. Okay, you can all sit down now. Thank you. Now, I'm getting a talk ready for Christmas. Ah, I look back over the 10 years that I've written these talks, and we'll be Zooming next week, which is Christmas Eve, but I thought I'd do my main Christmas one today and do more of a metaphysical one next week. Christmas is a time of great joy. And why is that? Well, according to some people, we are celebrating the greatest event in history and where mainstream churches are celebrating the birth of the conscious awareness of God in us, uh, we celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, we are celebrating the, con the conscious awareness of God in us as we are all sons and daughters of God. My goodness, these candles. Yes, all right. Um, now, we see Jesus as the great example, not the great exception. Because 500 years before Jesus was born, Gautama Buddha was teaching spiritual truths in India. Confucius and Nazi were doing the same thing in China. Different cultures, same truths. And these truths never change. They are the same yesterday, today and forever. And we are surrounded by and have in us our inner Christ, the Divine Presence. And there is a law of God that responds to our faith in it. It is done unto us as we believe. Christ will eventually be revealed in each one of us. And if not one particular person is predestined to be Christ, we all are. It is our destiny. And it's interesting what we find as we do our research for talks and our spiritual growth. We've all heard the saying, we are a drop in the ocean, yet the ocean uh, is in that drop. Well, if the ocean wasn't there, the drop wouldn't be there. And if spirit wasn't there, we wouldn't be here. And I found a heap of these things. And I thought, well, look, I'll leave it at that. And I'll think about that in the new year. The dictionary definition of joy is a feeling of happiness that comes from success, good fortune, and a source of well-being. That's one dictionary version. Maybe in the past I've equated happiness with joy. But as I moved on in consciousness, I realised that happiness is caused by outer effects and is only temporary. One minute we're happy, next minute something happens and we're back into the opposite. Joy is an inner knowing. It comes from living God's law and realising the truth that we are an eternal being, always surrounded inside and out by the love of God, regardless of other experiences to the contrary. In the Bible, in Galatians 5.22, St Paul says, There are nine fruits of the Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And the first two fruits of the Spirit are love and joy. These two go hand in hand. Now, the Christmas story is familiar to most of us. Whether it's a multicultural situation or not, most people, uh, over the years we've had interfaith talks here, and what we say here doesn't surprise other people. We've had the uh, Zoroastrians, the Buddhists, uh, the Muslims, the Hindus, everything. But there's also just a basic, a basic truth that runs through them all that can connect us. In our culture, we read of a wise man from the East setting out on a journey to follow a star, the appearance of a new star. The appearance of this star at this point in time 
was to them a fulfillment of a Zoroastrian prophecy about the arrival of a great deliverer. Tradition, not the Bible, gives us the names of these wise men as Caspar, Malkior, and Balthazar. But they brought gifts to the Christ child which are listed in the Bible. These were gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Excuse me. Now they've all got a meaning. Gold metaphysically represents the richness of spirit. They are brought to the Christ child, the consciousness of the omnipresence of substance. We can change our mind with wise and rich ideas. We shape substance. What a statement. We can actually change it. We, there's one pamphlet that was out here quite a few years ago. We can tell God what to do. Sounds very arrogant, doesn't it? But it's true. The substance, the divine matrix is there for us to shape whatever we want. My goodness, it makes us aware of what we want to bring into our consciousness. And I know some of us here, a lot of us actually, people I know, they're always looking at the news on the phone. And some of the junk that's in there is just terrible. I've, I'm a bit better at it now, but sometimes you wake up in the morning and I think, oh yeah, what's the editor's choice? Oh, okay. Uh, Fergie's going to talk about the corgis. This one. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what the story is now, if you really want to know. The main story today is how George Moroji's sister became the brains behind the family empire's crime scene. There you are. And while I'm here, I'll turn this off. So, um, okay, but it's amazing what stuff is in the papers and around us and even on the, the billboards. Very creative stuff too. Now, frankincense. This is a fragrant gum. Has anyone ever experienced it? Isn't it beautiful? It really is. Metaphysically, it represents the transmutation of material consciousness into the spiritual consciousness. In other words, there's that Bible verse again, not my will, but thy will be done. And it's not that God is a big dictator, but law is law and it's impersonal. And we are blessed or cursed according to how we use these laws. They don't change, but our way of working with it does change when we realise the consequences. And the final one is myrrh. An aromic gum resin, a perfume used in incense. Has anyone seen that one? Myrrh? I haven't come across that. It represents the eternity of spirit, an emblem of the resurrected consciousness, established consciousness, as Ernest Holmes calls it. We can't be knocked off our perch because we believe it. We've had the experiences to tell us we believe it, and that's it. And as we move into the different stages of life, it can be very comforting. In my stage of life, at 77 next week, just so you know, um, I can't do what I did 10 years ago. There seems to be something that comes on my friends at about the age of 70. And we all think that we're healthy and fit, but time catches up with us. So each period of life has a lesson for us. And one of those lessons is to let go. Do what we can do. And it's so good to see some of the young ones here coming in and looking after us here. It's beautiful. Thank you, Miu. I think we've stabilised yeah. the candles. Miu, thank you. Okay. Uh, now, there's another verse which I didn't put above the verse. I didn't put the verse there, but it's wise men ever seek the Christ. Now, we don't seek it in some far off place, even though it's very tempting. We could go to Machu Picchu and sit there and watch the um, beautiful ruins and think, oh, I feel so spiritual here. 
or we can go to the Himalayas and freeze to death for enlightenment. I had a friend who was studying Aikido. He was one of Australia's top Aikido experts. He met an expert from Japan who was studying uh, New Thought in Japan, Seki Noe, I think it was. And so he went to study at this ashram in Japan, thinking that's where he could find more illumination. So he went there. And after a year or so of cleaning the, the pools and scrubbing the decks and doing everything else, he said, I've had enough of this. So he went to the, um, the master and said, look, I think I've had enough and I think I'll go home. And the master said, what took you so long? <laughs> it's not fair, is it, sometimes, what we have to go through. Anyway, so we don't need to seek in a far-off place. Mind you, it does help. I, I think in some instances in the city, if you're stressed, I've gone into St. Patrick's Cathedral where the organ's been playing and just think, oh, this is heaven. Stained glass windows, the iconic statues are all there. It just brought a bit of its peace, which symbols can help, as we'll find out when we do our ceremony. Now, I could be in trouble here, but I'm mentioning numerology. Now, numerology is an ancient science, and we're talking about the number three. We had three gifts, the three wise men, the three names, and Jesus rode from, rose from the tomb on the third day. So three, according to the uh, literature I've read, is a symbol of completeness. Completeness of process or state. Ernest Holmes writes, man is a threefold principle of body, soul and spirit. In our Christian tradition, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. In the Hindu, Brahma, Vishnu and Shiva. And so it is in the Holy Trinity. Now that star we follow, not everyone can see that star. It's an inner, inner calling. Three wise men saw it because they were attuned to it. And in other religions, Yogananda talks about an inner light. Others do too. Buddha sat under the uh, bough of a tree, the Bodhi tree, symbolic of that light. And it may not even be a light, it just might mean that now it's happening. So as I said, not everyone saw it. King Herod definitely didn't see it, but he heard about it and it troubled him. Herod, according to our Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, represents the ruling will of the ego. Now we need our ego because we would be knocked around if we didn't have a bit of a one, but we need to tame it, control it, not let it, it control us, as it can do, till we learn how to use it. Now King Herod, that part of us doesn't want to change. We've got everything going, we've got the good life. Everything's happy. So I'm not going to change, says my ego, says King Herod. But we eventually will bypass Herod, as the wise men, when they saw the infant Jesus, that enlightenment, they moved away and went home by a different way. King Herod didn't see this star because he was led by the glitter of the world of effects. So the star of the east is an inner light. Some of the most beautiful sights on earth are those that force us to see beyond the seen to the unseen. St Paul says, what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. We have to think about that. Everything's already been there, it's just for us to tune in and get it. Whereas we had candlelight in the past, we now have electricity and all that sort of thing. At the International New Thought Alliance, when I went there uh, before COVID, I think it was a year before COVID, they didn't have these stars. So we've got to watch these, these candles at the, in the moment, but they had electric ones. It wasn't quite the same, but they had electric ones across the very 
very American. And is that naughty? Don't let that get back to any of our friends. But <laughs> it was, it was just different. And but it was a, a big, it was a big, big, big place. And of course, there's a safety concern, and they have a duty of care to the people there. So no chances were taken. So we celebrate Christmas. People ask me whether I believe Jesus lived. I say that I know Christ lives in me and you. How is Christ in us? Is he still in the manger? Or is he out there arguing with the, the prophets and the rabbis, Hillel and all those other learned men of the Jewish temples? Or is our Christ consciousness on the way to being fully, fully awed? The old poem, Angelus Silesius, born in 1624, very powerful verse. Though Christ a thousand times be born in Bethlehem, if he is not born in thee, thy soul is all forlorn. So, joy is an inner quality waiting to be recognised and expressed. It, it, it springs from the presence of our indwelling Christ. And the joy we get when we follow that star and eventually reach that point of knowing. So at this time of giving and receiving, what a great gift awaits anyone who will accept the full implications of their own indwelling divinity. And the joyful realisation that Christmas is about the conscious awareness of the birth of Christ in us. So be it. Thank you.